Good morning. I'm just getting up. I'm kind of being quiet. Um, Johnny is upstairs sleeping. He's working from home, so he doesn't have a commute anymore. So he's really taking advantage of sleeping in. I couldn't sleep anymore though. So time to make some caffeinated beverages. I'm switching up my routine of usual black coffee. Uh, this is what I normally get when I go to Starbucks. I enjoy their chai, but I don't feel like going to Starbucks because they've had reports on the news that they're making their employees work sick and I don't want to be exposed to people right now. I just don't think it's a good time. So I found this in my pantry and I'm just gonna make myself a nice little chai for breakfast. Be my little treat. I was gonna be productive today and film um, a vlog video that you guys have been asking for. You wanna see how I've organized my closet and that definitely needs to get done. <sighs> it's a nightmare. Um, but I just sat down to drink my chai and Bravo has a Real Housewives of Miami marathon going on and I loved it. And I really just wanna sit on the couch and watch this all day long. Making a homemade hash for breakfast, just potatoes and onions. And then I'm going to top it with some of this and scramble up some eggs and sausages here in a second. We just finished our breakfast. It was a late breakfast. It's past noon right now. Um, and unfortunately, Johnny got called into the office, which I find to be very frustrating, but apparently he's needed there for a little bit. So he knows he has to wash his hands, take his shoes off when he gets here. No jacket in the house, like that whole thing. Um, so he'll be coming back later this afternoon, but I wanted to show you guys and I forgot because we were starving since we waited so late to eat breakfast. Um, this is what I have left of it, but we always make blood orange juice at home and we make it as in we juice blood oranges and drink that for our orange juice. Um, but the color is beautiful. The first time I ever had this was when I was in Italy and everywhere you walked, they had like fresh squeezed blood orange juice and I became obsessed with it and I started doing it at home. But if you're hosting like a brunch or if you want a very colorful boarding table on the airplane, um, just buy a bag of blood oranges and run it through a citrus press and you've got a beautiful and delicious juice. It's not as tart as orange juice either, so. A little note about those oranges. If you decide to put them in your fruit basket, like if you're a corporate flight attendant, uh, let your passengers know because I put them in on my fruit basket on a flight once and my passenger peeled it and he was like, there is something seriously wrong with your orange. So it was funny. I actually think of him every time I have blood oranges. Um, but yes, they look scary if you're expecting a normal orange, but they taste delicious. This is not what I wanna be doing right now, but it's what I should be doing. Um, I rode the bike yesterday and I had a really hard ride. And I thought about doing a recovery ride today, um, but I went online and I found some fitness stuff that I think I'm just gonna follow along with and do my cardio on the floor using like these weights and the kettlebell rather than doing a spin class today. So let's do it. I showered, I put on a little bit of makeup, 
so I could remember what it feels like to be normal again. Uh, I did definitely get back into my pajamas, but that's okay. It's quarantine time. I'm hunkering down. I'm staying in the house. I'm going to start making some lunch. I've got a big head of cauliflower. I don't really know what to do with it, but I'm going to roast it and make a soup out of it. So I'll show you guys what I do. I'm not following a recipe, um, but generally soup is pretty easy to make. It's a, a pretty foolproof thing. So I'm going to get going on that. When there's nothing to do, I eat all day and I cook all day. All right, I set the oven to 350. Now I'm gonna clean the cauliflower, chop the cauliflower, and I'll show you what's next. I lined a cookie sheet with foil and put some olive oil down, and I'm gonna season it with some turmeric and garlic powder. And you know what? I actually have some extra baby carrots in the fridge, so I'm gonna throw those onto here too. Why not? All right, next up, I'm gonna chop up a white onion and saute it in butter. And the butter's just gonna make it really creamy as opposed to sauteing it in oil. And as you can tell by the cookie sheet, I changed my mind about roasting the carrots. I'm actually gonna saute them in the butter with the onion. And I'm just doing a rough chop of the onions and the carrots because I will be pureeing this all together. So you don't have to do like super fine, my hands are clean. Um, but I just have like chunks of onion here. All right, I've got the cauliflower in the oven. Uh, I set a timer for 20 minutes. I'll check and see if it's fork tender in 20 minutes. And now I've got the carrots, onion, crushed red pepper, more garlic powder, and more turmeric. Turmeric's very good for you. It'll help keep us healthy. Uh, so I've got that all coming together in my pot. I've decided the chef needs a little snack break. The cauliflower is not quite tender, so I'm gonna keep snacking and I set my timer for 10 more minutes. The cauliflower looks and smells delicious, so I'm going to transfer it into the pot and stir it up and let it all cook together for a minute before I add the next ingredients. I've set two cauliflower crowns aside. I'm gonna use that later for garnish. Uh, this step is not necessary if you want your food to look nice this is what you do. Like if I was serving this on the airplane, I would set this aside um, and I'm doing it only because I'm filming a video. But if I were just making this for me and Johnny, I would certainly be throwing all the cauliflower in the pot and not worrying about what the soup is gonna look like once I plate it. So that's doing its thing probably, I don't know, for five minutes just to incorporate all the flavors together. And then I'm gonna add this box of chicken broth. It's 32 ounces right into there. I'm gonna bring this to a boil and then let it simmer for about 30 minutes. I've transferred the cauliflower, carrots, onions to a blender and then I added some cool water in there because you don't wanna blend anything while it's hot. So I'm gonna puree this until it's silky smooth. Uh, if you have an, immer an immersion blender, you can use that too. I just don't have one, so I'm using the standard guy here. All right, so when it's a nice creamy consistency, I add the puree back into the broth. And now it's ready to serve. I would try it first and see if you need to add any salt to it, but it's definitely ready for plating now. successfully killed the afternoon by eating soup and reading and now it's time for me to cook again I'm gonna get dinner going uh, but you guys let me know you wanted to see something that I would make for dinner at home and to serve on the airplane and it took me a while to come up with something because 
Obviously when I'm at home, I have a full kitchen and everything that I could need. And on the airplane, I only have limited resources, but I have a solution. I picked up this pan sear teriyaki salmon. It's sea cuisine. Uh, I feel like I got this at Target, but I've purchased them from Whole Foods before and I've used them on the plane. You just keep it frozen. It's already marinated. So this one is two wild Alaskan salmon fillets seasoned with ginger, soy sauce, and red pepper. So I'm gonna throw this into the oven just like I would do on an airplane. And then I'm preparing the sides a little differently. Uh, these also came from Target. I have a bag of green beans and some sweet potato cubes. And if I was on the airplane, I would throw these into aluminum tins and heat them in the oven. But since I'm at home, I'm gonna put a little brown onto the potatoes, crisp them up a bit in a pan, and I'll be serving my meal that way. So. I'll show you how I would plate this as if, sorry, I've got like right over there. I'll show you how I would plate this as if I was on the airplane, um, but instead it's just gonna be for me and Johnny for dinner tonight. When you're entertaining and plating food, there's a few components to remember. Uh, texture, color, and height. And you also wanna have a border around. You don't wanna like fill the plate to maximum capacity unless you're plating food for a pilot because they wanna eat everything. Uh, but generally, you, you wanna have a variety of textures, a variety of colors, and you want some dimension, uh, some height in with your plate. So I'll be putting the salmon down on to the sweet potatoes to stack it and elevate it. And since the salmon is a teriyaki salmon and it's kind of got that orangey hue that the sweet potatoes do, that will blend together and then we'll build up from there using the green beans. So I just looked at how to prepare the salmon. I've preheated the oven. Here on the ground, it says preheat for 400. If you're flying, you know that as you gain elevation, temperatures get hotter quicker. So if I was to be preparing this on the airplane, I'd probably only set the oven for 350. And here on the land, uh, bake for 18 to 20 minutes. In the airplane, I would probably check it after 10 minutes because things cook super fast when you're at high elevation. So I'm gonna get dinner going. Um, no recipes here. I'm opening packages and preparing them. It's just how I plate it and then the garnishes that will show you how I would do this on the airplane. All right, so we've got our base layer down. And then you prop the protein up at an angle. All right, so I stacked the greens on top of that. And then the final step when you're plating food, wipe these edges so the plate appears clean. Remember the clean border is something important when it comes to food plating. Hello, good morning. It's obviously a new day. Uh, we were so tired after all of the food that we ate yesterday. We started, we're doing this puzzle. I'll give you a little close up. It's actually a pretty cool puzzle. Um, but we started this puzzle and within like 40 minutes, we knew it was time for bed. So we started this Liberty puzzle. It's a, a wooden jigsaw puzzle and it's the famous Vincent Van Gogh starry night photo. And this is basically what we got done in 40 minutes. Um, but look how crazy the shapes are. I mean, there's like this little flower and a man, some music notes. This is an insane puzzle. So this is what's keeping us busy when we're not watching TV during quarantine. I'm about to jump on a video conference, so I have to do my hair and I have to change my outfit, um, but it's work related. We're just gonna be talking about like moving forward now that we're dealing with being a transportation company during the time of coronavirus. So, so I'll be giving you guys some updates on that, just like any useful information that I think is worth sharing. Um, still no idea of when I'll be flying again. It's almost one month to the day that I've been on an airplane, so that's pretty sad. Um, but I would rather be safe and healthy and at home than putting my life or anyone else's life in danger. So thank you guys very much for watching this vlog. Please leave me a thumbs up. Also, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. If you're looking for me on social media, my Twitter name is at Jack Travels. That's J-A-C Travels. And on Instagram, I'm Jacqueline Travels, just like I am here on YouTube. If you guys have questions, comments, thoughts, or concerns, post them down below for me and I'll talk to you soon. Thank you again for watching.